Pimax is on fire. In their recent update, Pimax introduced quite a few highly anticipated additions to their brand new Pimax Crystal, the high-end PC VR gaming headset. Or is it really just a PC VR headset? Because alongside impressive new features like eye tracking, auto APD adjustment, dynamic full viewed rendering, and 120 Hz refresh rate, they also added a brand new standalone mode, which allows you to use Pimax independently from your PC, similar to Quest, but just how good is it? And is it good at all? There's also some exciting news revealed about the upcoming Pimax Reality 12K QLED headset, rumored to be the most advanced PC VR headset to date. But before we jump into that and the new standalone feature of Crystal, let's first discuss the new features added in the recent update. First one is eye tracking, and that is an absolutely massive one, because eye tracking on Crystal allow them to enable automatic IPD adjustment and dynamic foveated rendering, which you can see here in the Pimax software on your PC. All you need to do is enable them to enjoy the benefits. Auto IPD adjustment worked really well for me, and basically, as soon as I put on the headset after the update was completed, I heard the motors working and the lenses moved on their own to adjust their position. The only kind of strange thing here is that they would move pretty much every time I put on the headset, they seem to readjust every time I take it off and back on, but we'll see if that will be fixed in the future. Now just a word about foveated rendering. Basically, dynamic foveated rendering takes advantage of the eye tracking by rendering the parts of the screen that you are directly looking at at the highest resolution, while the image at the periphery is rendered at lower resolution. This allows much higher computational power, as your PC doesn't have to use all of its resources to render the entire screen, but only focus on the parts in your direct field of vision. This worked exceptionally well on PSVR 2, which also features dynamic foveated rendering. And now, thanks to the enabled eye tracking, it's also available on Crystal. There's a pretty extensive list of games that are currently supporting dynamic foveated rendering. You can find the link into this document in the description. Thank you, Immersed Robot, for sharing this document. The game that I was recommended to try to check this dynamic foveated rendering performance is DCS World, or Digital Combat Simulator World. It's free to play on Steam, so go ahead and fire it up, you will not be disappointed with Crystal's performance. To get the most benefit out of dynamic foveated rendering in the Pimax app, go to Maximum, meaning it will be the most aggressive in reducing the resolution of the image in the peripheral view of where you're looking, which will help you get the most computational power out of your PC. In the Pimax software, you can also now switch to 120 Hz refresh rate, which is also a new feature in this update, so if your PC can handle it, by all means, take advantage of this high refresh rate. As for eye tracking, you can calibrate it right here in the Pimax app as well. Even though putting on the headset for the first time, even without calibration, the headset would still adjust my FOV automatically, and it was pretty good, so I was impressed by that. And one more thing added is that you can now get a lighthouse module, which will allow you to use your base stations and Vive or Index controllers if you prefer those, instead of the inside-out cameras on Pimax Crystal and their own native uh, controllers. So these are the main features introduced in the new uh, Pimax Crystal update, and now we can move on to the most anticipated feature, which is the standalone mode. It basically turns your Pimax Crystal into a quest-like headset, allowing you to play standalone games. You can enable it by simply turning this physical switch on the back of the visor, and the first thing that you will do is set up your room, not unlike on Quest 2. You set up the floor height and the boundaries. Now, the problem I found here is that it seems to restart this process every time you put on the headset. Like, it doesn't seem to save it, which I found really odd. I don't know if that was made by design. I don't really think so, but this is how it is in my headset for now. Of course, I could see a significant downgrading in the visual quality, obviously because the image is rendered in 2K rather than 4K in the standalone mode. Unfortunately, I'm unable to show you the direct recording of the gameplay because as of now, Pimax software doesn't support recording. Again, rather annoying for content creators. To be honest, why Pimax decided to include a standalone mode in Crystal is still a mystery to me. It's an incredibly bulky and heavy headset, which I imagine is only comfortable to use as a stationary device to play games like Microsoft Flight Sim, Elite Dangerous, or some kind of a racing game like Formula One, but not like quick and fast-paced experiences like the one that you can often find in standalone uh, store, which by the way currently only has about 10 games, and one of the games I tried is a fitness game, and again, I just don't see anyone 
deciding to use Crystal as their go-to headset for active gaming. And besides the selling point of Pimax is its incredible visuals. They are unbelievably sharp and clear, and I just find using Crystal as a standalone headset a waste of Crystal's capabilities. And simply imagine how much cheaper Crystal would have been if they have completely dropped the standalone mode and fully focused all their resources on just developing and polishing their PC VR capabilities. Still, I do think that this new update definitely increases the value of Pimax Crystal. The eye tracking, the dynamic foveated rendering, automatic IPD adjustment and the 120Hz refresh rate are definitely a very worthy upgrades that are making this headset much better and I think that it is much easier to set up now than before. In my initial review I was really complaining a lot about how difficult it is and how many things were not working. Well now it really is not the case anymore. I think that they have resolved most of the issues that uh, I used to face in my initial testing with the exception of maybe making it work with the RTX 3090 Ti graphics card. That one is still quite problematic for many PC VR headsets including Pimax Crystal but it did work great on 3080. There's also some interesting news that Pimax Crystal is now entering the trade-in program of 12K, but it has some strange uh, things in that news that don't really make sense to me, but I actually discussed them more in this video, so go ahead and check it out if you're interested in maybe purchasing 12K when it's finally available and how Pimax Crystal might help you with that. Or not, we'll have to see. Thanks for watching and see you next time.